E equals MC squared, you mentioned. How amazing is that to you, that energy and mass are the same? Yeah. And what does that have to do with nuclear fusion? So it has to do with everything we do. It's the fact that energy and mass are equivalent to each other. They're just, the way we usually comment to it is that they're just energy just in different forms. Can you intuitively understand that? Yes, but it takes a long time. <laughs> I um, uh, haven't for a while, but usually, often I've, I, I teach the, um, uh, the inter introductory class for incoming nuclear engineers. And, and so we put this up as an equation and we go through many um, iterations of, of using this, uh, to, to how you derive it, how you use it, and so forth. And then you, usually in the final exam, I would give, uh, I would basically take all the equations that I've used before and I flip it around. I basically, instead of thinking about energy is equal to, to mass, it's sort of mass is equal to energy. And I ask the question in a different way and usually about half the students don't get it. It takes a while it's, it's to get that intuition. Yeah. Um, so, so in the end, it's interesting is that this, this is, is actually the source of all free energy because that energy that we're talking about is kinetic energy if it can be transformed from mass. So it turns out even, even though we, we used equals mc squared, this is burning coal and, and burning gas are, and burning wood is actually still equals mc squared. The problem is that you would never know this because the relative change in the mass is incredibly small. By the way, which comes back to fusion, which is that... E equals mc squared. Okay, so what does this mean? It tells you that the the amount of energy that is liberated in a particular reaction when you change mass has to, do, because c squared is, that's the speed of light squared. It's a large number. It's a very large number and it's totally constant everywhere in the universe, which is, which is thing, another right? weird thing. Which is another weird thing and in all rest frames and the, the, actually the relativity stuff gets more <laughs> difficult conceptually when, until you get through it. Anyway, so you go, you go to that and and it's and what that tells you is that it's the relative it's the relative change in the mass will tell you about the relative amount of energy that's liberated and this is what makes fusion and you asked about fission as well too this is what makes them extraordinary it's because the relative change in the mass is very large as compared to what you get like in a chemical reaction in fact it's about it's about 10 million times larger and that is at the heart of why you use something like fusion. It's because that is a fundamental of nature. Like you can't beat that. So of whatever you do, if you're thinking about, and why do I care about this? Well, because mass is like the fuel, right? So this means gathering the resources that it takes to gather a fuel, to hold it together, to deal with it, the environmental impact it would have. And fusion will always have 20 million times the amount of energy release per reaction that you could of those. So this is why, you know, we consider it the ultimate, like environmentally friendly energy source is because of that. So is it is it correct to think of mass broadly as a kind of storage of energy? Yes. 